Hey everyone, uh, this is uh, Unit 1 Notes number 9, Transformations of H in K. Go ahead and write down the FLT here, and play whenever you're ready, okay? Alright, so given either a linear, quadratic, or absolute value function, you're going to be able to identify the effects of H and K here, and I'll talk about that uh, by describing, graphing, and or explicitly defining the function. So there's uh, a lot of layers to this. So we'll start off with this, okay? First off, we have to understand the difference between a linear, a quadratic, and an absolute value function. So let's take care of that piece first, okay? So what you're going to do here is we're going to study, um, we're going to predict you know, what the function is going to look like, okay? So here's how you guys do it. So suppose you had a function where the largest degree was a 2, okay? No matter what, if you were to graph this, you will get some type of parabola U-shape, okay? But parabola is the more technical term, okay? So even if I wrote y equals x squared plus 4x plus 3, the largest degree is still 2, so then you should understand that it's some type of parabola, okay? Or even if I wrote it like the quantity of x minus 3 squared plus 5, notice how the largest degree is still 2, so you know the picture has to be some type of parabola, okay? Here's one more. So it can be written in many different ways, but you're looking for the largest degree. If the largest degree is 2, you know the graph is going to show some type of U parabola shape. Okay? All right. Now, what if uh, your largest degree was just an invisible 1? Okay? You guys have seen this in Algebra 1, but let's review. Basically, whenever your largest degree is 1, you're getting some type of line, okay? Same thing here. The largest degree is 1. So you're going to get some type of line. Now, how that line faces or how that parabola faces, we'll talk about over the next few lessons, okay? And here's one more. Y equals X has a degree of 1. So we know it's going to be some type of line as well, okay? So recap, whenever your largest degree is 2, you're going to get a parabola shape, a U shape, okay? And if you get a largest degree of 1, you're going to get some type of line, all right? Now the last one is, well, what if you have like an absolute value with two vertical bars there, right? Okay? So the easiest way to remember this is if you have an absolute value, you have a V shape. So it's a little bit different from a parabola because it turns in a very sharp direction. Notice how you have a corner here. Okay. A parabola is a little bit more smooth. It creates kind of like a U shape. But here it's more of a V shape. So think of absolute value. You have a V shape, right? So here are a couple more. Let's say you have the 4 times the absolute value of x plus 3. It's still some type of V shape. Okay? Your V shape could also be upside down, and we'll talk about that as well. So in short, if you see a degree of 2, you know it's going to be a U shape. Okay? If you see the largest degree is only a 1, you know it's going to be linear, a line. And if you see the absolute value bar, absolute value, you're going to get a V shape. Okay. So the first thing that you want to do is knowing what type of shape you're dealing with. Okay. So we took care of the hard part there. Now, they introduce the effects of H and K. Okay. So... You guys are going to actually explore what H and K do here. I'm going to do that with you guys. But basically, let's stick with the parabola here, okay? So y equals x squared. 
This right here is the most basic quadratic function. We like to call that the parent function. Okay, the parent function is right at the origin. Okay, and I'll show you that in a second. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to find out what happens if we play with the parameters. So these right here are called parameters. They're kind of like variables um but not really because they're a set value okay variable the variables represent any number right but h and k we're slowly changing it to a set number and then we're going to try to see what happens when we change those numbers okay so a few things h and k notice how h and k are not next to a variable okay um, h and k are not next to a variable. If you guys remember way back in Integrated Math 1, a number that is not next to a variable, we call that a constant. Okay. Whereas a number next to a variable, we call that a coefficient. Okay. So the first thing I want you guys to understand is that h and k are constants. So they can be easily confused for each other, like which one's H and which one's K, right? So remember, H and K are constants here, but notice the difference between the H and the K. The H is always inside of your function, so it's always on the inside, and K is always somewhere on the outside, all right? So first, we got to understand which one represents H and which one represents K, okay? And then the last part is the easy part is, what the heck does H and K do to your graph, okay? So you guys can follow along with me, or you could just watch, but I'm going to use uh, Desmos. Hopefully, you guys have seen it before. No worries if you haven't. Let me go ahead and change a few things so that it's a little bit easier to see. Okay. So we have our x and y axis here. Um, we have three different functions that we're going to go over, the linear, the quadratic, and the absolute value. But we're not going to go over every single one of them. But I'll pick the one that is easiest to see. So we're going to do y equals x squared. So again, this red parabola here is our parent function. Okay, So we're going to try to see what happens when we insert a k value, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have x squared plus a k, okay? So notice how when I press k here, they ask me to add a slider. Here's what that means, okay? So right now, k is programmed as one, okay? I'm gonna slow it down. But I want you to study the values of k. So right now, k is equal to 1, and it gave me this blue graph right here. Okay, what happened to that graph? Okay, did it move? Did it stretch? Did it, what did it do? Did it flip around? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this run. Okay, notice what happens when k gets a little bit larger. So right now it's at 2. Now it's at 3. What is happening to that parabola, right? Notice how it's kind of moving in a direction. It's moving upwards, right? Okay. Now, what would happen? What would happen if k was negative? Okay, notice what's happening to the graph right now. Okay, and I can speed this up. So, depending on what k is, what is happening to the graph here, right? So think about that. Okay, and you can replay that as much as you guys need to. But you notice that when k is... Let me stop it right there. When k is positive, 
you're picking up that red parabola and you're just moving it upwards. Right? You're just moving it upwards. Now, when k is negative, you notice that the graph starts to move downwards. Okay? What's another word for moving up and down, right? That's called a vertical movement. So, take a look here. Let's talk about k, okay? Okay, when k is positive, sometimes people write k is greater than zero. That just means positive, okay? When k is positive, the function, what happens to it, right? Okay, think about what you would write there Write it in pencil if you're not sure. So when k was positive, what happened to that parabola, right? Press play when you're ready. So k is pretty easy to spot. Uh, some of you guys would say uh, the parabola is moving upwards. The parabola is shifting upwards. Um, all of those words are fine. So we could say move. We could say shift. The fancier, more technical term and I want you guys to write this down, is the function translates. Okay, translate is, well, obviously when you guys hear the word translate, we're changing one language to another, right? But translate is also another word or term for shifting. You're picking something up and you're moving it. So it translates or shifts upwards. Okay, so when k was positive, so for instance, if I gave you an example, y equals x squared plus 6. So this is where we're going to go back and we're going to describe. Okay, so we would say, if I were to ask you to describe this graph, you would say that this is a parabola. That translates upwards. Well, how many units? If you take a look, that plus six is your k, so we're gonna translate upwards six units. Okay? This is your describe or description. I can't spell. Description. Okay? So a lot of what you're going to do in math is, especially when you go into upper level math, you're going to be sketching a lot. And I know back in Algebra 1 or Integrated Math 1, you had to be very precise. You really don't. So you do a quick sketch. Okay, We have our x and y axes. Go ahead and draw this out as well. Okay, Some people like to draw the parent function. Okay, and they'll just call this y equals x squared, or they'll call it the parent function. Okay, and notice how that's not the prettiest parabola, right? It's all shaky, but it doesn't matter. Because in math, in upper level math, what you're trying to do is just get an idea of what it generally looks like, right? So we know it's going to move up six units. So right here with this parabola, at the origin... That is our vertex. We only focus on that one point. So we go up one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this right here is six. So what we do is we move that vertex up six units. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It'll land right here. And I know the parabola is still a U shape. So this right here is Y equals X squared plus six. And that is you guys knowing how to sketch a graph very quickly, okay? Back then, you guys had to make a table. You had to plug in an X value to get a Y value. And then you had to plot like five different points. So what we're trying to get you guys to, to graduate from is to move on from the table and then just produce sketches, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. 
So there you go. All right. Now here's another example. I want you to describe and to sketch this one here. Y equals X squared minus four. Go ahead and write down the description and sketch, quickly sketch uh, the graph that I wrote down here, okay? Press play whenever you're ready. Okay, so here we know it's a parabola because it's an X squared, okay? So we're gonna say it's a parabola. that. Now what's happening to this here, okay? So we notice that the k value is a negative 4, okay? So we're going to say that it translates. Now what happens when there's a minus 4, right? So look, we know that when k is positive, let me get rid of that highlight, the function translates or shifts upwards. So what happens, what do you guys think happens when k is negative? Right? So I'll make a space for that. Let me copy, paste this here. I'll put it down here. Okay, so here we go. When k is negative, now, some people like to write when k is less than 0, because that's all the negative numbers. Fill in the blank there. The function. Okay. Either you could say translates or shifts. Okay. The correct term is downwards. Okay. Notice that whenever k is negative, shifts downwards and you guys can see that logically okay because when you're adding a positive number you're increasing the y value so you're making it move upwards okay and if you're subtracting the y value you're making it move downwards okay so let's go back to this one here so a parabola that translates downwards Four units okay so I want you to note I didn't put down negative four units think about why I don't do that okay pause and press play when you're ready all right why do I not put negative four units okay simply because I don't say negative four units because the negative is already implied through the word downwards Downwards already implied that it was a negative value, so there's no need to write a negative four units. It's kind of like a double negative in English, right? Um, so just watch out for that. Okay, so how do I sketch that? Y equals X squared minus four. What I'm going to do is we're going to try to use the same graph here, okay? So how do I draw a parabola that goes down four units? So what you guys would do is from the origin, you would go down four units. And I'll color code this. So it's just a parabola that translates downwards four units. Okay, I didn't talk about anything else except that that red parabola is going to move down four units. So you're going to have something that looks like this. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. Okay, it's just a rough sketch. And that's basically it. Okay, the K value is so simple. So the K determines your vertical translation. Okay, your vertical translation. That graph is either going to move up or down, right? Okay, so let's talk about H now, okay? So H, remember H is inside of your function, okay? And we're dealing with parabolas right now, but I'll play with the absolute values and linear functions in a second, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get rid of my parameter uh, k there, and I'm going to insert my h parameter, okay? So here's when h is 0. So when h is 0, you get your parent function right there. 
But notice what happens when h gets larger or when h gets smaller than negatives, right? I'll slow this down if you guys can't see it. Okay, think about what conjecture you can make here. What statement can you make? If something happens, then this happens. Okay, pause whenever you need to. Look at this as often as you need to. Pay attention to the values of h as it's changing and what's happening to that graph there. Okay, so is h the same as k, right? Is h making the parabola translate up and down? Notice how it does not here. It's very clear that h makes it move horizontally. So h horizontal is how you guys remember this, okay? h is horizontal. Now, it's a little bit weird. So let's say if h was 5-ish, okay? Did the graph, remember, we started at the red function. Did we move towards the right or towards the left? Okay, when h is 5-ish, we move towards the right, okay? Now, when h is negative 4-ish, we move towards the left. And that kind of makes sense because when h is positive, we move towards the right. That's where all the positive values are. And when h is negative, we move towards the left. So that makes a lot of sense. But this is where some people get confused. Okay, some like to say that h works a little bit backwards, okay? Notice how this says x minus h quantity squared, okay? So if I wrote y equals x minus 3 quantity squared, okay, what is my h value, okay? Think about that and then write it down. Okay, what is my h value? My h value here <clears throat> is a positive 3 because it matches up. The x's matches up, the minus matches up, so h has to be a 3. <clears throat> so what does it mean when h is 3? Okay, we're going to move horizontally, but do we move left or right? Okay h since h is positive we move towards the right because that's where all the positive values are okay now if i switch this up a little bit okay think about what your h value is here pause think about it guess and then press play when you're ready h right here now look the general form is x minus h squared. The x matches up, but the minus doesn't here. So h is really negative 2, and I'll prove it to you guys, because if I plug in negative 2 for h, what happens when you have two negatives right next to each other? Right? It turns into a positive, which is what we have here. And when h is negative, we know we move towards the left. Some people get confused because they visually they see plus 2 and they think, okay, positive means to the right. But h is really negative here, so we're actually moving towards the left. Same thing here. Some people see minus 3 and they think, okay, h is negative 3, so that's left. But really, h is positive 3, so we're moving towards the right. So how do we fix this, right? Some people like to think that H works in the opposite direction, okay? So if you just think opposite with H, if that clicks with you, go ahead and, and use it, okay? If you would rather rewrite it so that you could identify the H values, do that too. Whatever works for you guys, okay? <clears throat> okay, so let's make some statements here, okay? So for H, when K, sorry, when H is positive okay or when h is greater than zero okay the function okay fill in the blank there okay and same thing what would happen 
if it was the other way around. Okay, go ahead and write that down and then fill in the blanks there. When h is positive, the function blinks. And when h is negative, the function blinks. When h is positive, the function translates, or we could call it shifts, to the right. OK? When h is negative, the function translates or shifts to the left. This will make a lot more sense once we actually do some problems. Okay? So that's basically what you guys are responsible for there. Okay? So let's do a few. Here we go. Let's say we had y equals x minus 6 quantity squared, okay? So how would we describe it, right? So do we know what shape we're dealing with here? We do. We know that because the degree is 2, we're going to have what shape? We're going to have a parabola, okay? Now what's happening to this parabola? So notice how we have x minus 6 there, okay? And again, <clears throat> you could do this two ways. You can look at negative 6 and think opposite, or you can look at the h value, which is really positive 6. But think about what that means, okay? It's a parabola that translates or shifts 6 units to the right. So again, a lot of people I've seen just think opposite. They see negative 6 is negative, which most people think is left, but you go opposite and it'll be towards the right. Or if you find the h value, that'll tell you that it goes towards the right or towards the left. Since 6 is positive, we go towards the right. Whichever way works for you, it really doesn't matter here, okay? Okay, so how do we sketch that? Here we go. Quick sketch. Okay. Try to be as neat as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can tell, my axes are not perfect here, okay? We're always going to draw our parent function, so our most basic parabola starts at the origin. Okay. And we'll label it. We'll call it y equals x squared or our parent function. Okay. What's going to happen to this parabola? We know it's going to shift 6 units to the right. So all we do is we create some equal tick marks, okay, all the way up to 6. And we'll use a different color here. I'll use blue. And we know our vertex is going to move over 6 units. And then we're just going to graph our parabola. This right here is y equals x minus 6 quantity squared. Okay, so you guys know how to describe it. You know how to graph it. And you know how the function really looks, but we'll talk about that last part in a second. Okay? All right, here we go. Let's do one more. Uh, let's say we had y equals x plus 4 quantity squared. Make sure you guys are saying quantity, okay? Quantity squared. Go ahead and try that on your own and then press play when you're ready. Okay, so we know that from the square it's going to be a parabola, okay? That translates 4 units to the left, okay? Because h is really negative 4 because it's x minus negative 4 here. That's really your h, all right? Or if you see plus 4 and you think opposite, that really goes towards the left. It's really up to you on how you want to explain that there, okay? 
Okay, so we described it, all right? All that's left is to graph it. Actually, you know what? Let's graph it on this one so that we save space here. I'll color code this uh, to green. Okay, so we know that we have to go four units to the left from the origin. So one, two, three, and four. And we know our vertex is going to move there. And we're just going to have a parabola. There you go. H and K are simple, okay? So to yourself, before you press play again, tell yourself what H and K do in your own words, okay? Okay, so basically, K makes things move up and down, okay? H makes things move horizontally, left and right, okay? Um, at the beginning, I asked you guys, What's the difference between H and K? Because they're both constants here, right? They don't have a variable next to it. So remember, H is always the one that's inside of your function. So inside of that quantity, K is always outside. That can be a little bit confusing, and I'll show you in some problems where you might get confused so that you can prevent it, okay? Okay, so here's example one, all right? Describe and sketch the transformation. So you guys are dealing with a transformation here, and H and K transforms your graph, all right? So we'll do a couple. Here we go. We'll start off simple here. Y equals the quantity of X minus 3 squared plus two okay so if you notice here how many parameters do we have right we have uh two parameters we have an h and a k all right now which one is h and which one is k think about that press play when you're ready we know that the number on the outside of the function is your k so k equals two and the number on the inside is your h. h is a positive 3. All right. Now, do we know what the picture looks like? Well, square means what? We're going to have a parabola. Okay. That translates. You could also say shifts. Okay. So we know we're going to move two units what and three units what okay press play whenever you're ready when you have that filled out okay it's going to be two units up and three units to the right okay if you didn't get that you're not sure why text me reach out to me okay or reach out to up here okay so we described it good now we have to sketch it here we go. Okay. We are going to have our parent function, which is right at the origin. Okay. And we know we're going to move two units up. So I'm going to draw two tick marks, two units up. But we're also going to move three units to the right. So here's what you guys do. This is called vertex form, okay? Because you're really moving just your vertex. So you focus on just the one point, and I'll put it in purple, okay? That's the vertex. But you're moving every single point all at the same time. You're just focusing on one point. So we're going to move up two units, but then move three units to the right. You can even go the other way. You can move three units to the right, and then move up two units. It really doesn't matter. Notice how you end up in the same spot. Okay? So then you just draw your parabola. Okay? But I would definitely label that this is x minus 3 quantity squared plus 2. And the other one was just your parent function. If you can color code this, this will be really easy to understand. Okay? And that's it. Okay? Let's try one more. 
okay? Now, let's say we had y equals the absolute value of x minus 4 minus 3, okay? What's different about this? You could actually try this on your own if you want to, okay? So, I notice that my k value is negative 3 because it's outside of the function. I know that my h is a positive 4. Okay, now what kind of picture am I going to get? Since I have absolute values, I'm going to have a v shape, right? So we don't say a v shape. We're just going to say an absolute value that translates or shifts four units blank and three units blank. Go ahead and fill in the missing parts there, okay? Press play whenever you're ready. Okay, so we have an absolute value that translates or shifts four units to the right because H is positive. Okay, and three units down or downward, okay, because K is negative, all right? So here we go, let's sketch. Whoa, nice line. Okay. All right, so we have our X and Y axes. Okay. We know that we're going to move four units to the right, so I'm going to go ahead and Go four units to the right. I know we're going to go three units down. One, two, and three. Okay. We draw our parent function. Now, what shape are we going to get, you guys? Are we going to get a U shape, a parabola? It's a little bit different here. So we have an absolute value. Absolute value gives me a V shape. So we have our parent function right here. Okay. And then you focus on the vertex, okay? What's gonna happen, we're gonna move every single point four units to the right, and you don't have to draw out the dotted line here, I'm just showing you my thought process. And then from there, I'm gonna go three units down and make a point. Or you could even go down three units and then four units to the right. Notice how you still land in the same spot here. But in reality, you guys are not drawing these tick marks, okay? I'm just showing you guys my path, okay? So, I'm still going to have a V-shape. So you draw a V-shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? And then we label. That's Y equals the absolute value of X minus 4 minus the 3, okay? Last thing I'm going to leave with for you guys, all right? Actually, here's one more example because we didn't deal with the linear, okay? This one, I wouldn't spend too much time on because really when you're dealing with transformations, um, you're dealing with anything quadratic and higher, okay? But just to show you, it works the same way. X minus 2 plus 3, Okay? Notice how it's not an absolute value function and the degree is not a two. Actually, the largest degree is a one right there, but they don't write it, okay? So we know it's gonna be a linear function, okay? That, we know there's gonna be some type of translation, so it translates or shifts, okay? And I'll fill in the blank for you guys, three units blank and two units blank really think about that you guys and then fill in the blank okay three units up word or up it doesn't matter and two units to the right okay since h is a positive two and k is a positive three all right, 
and then we sketch same way so again don't focus on linear functions too much only because we usually don't graph by shifting we graph just by y equals mx plus b uh, but just know that there's another way to do it so here we have our parent function so your parent function y equals x is just a perfect diagonal line going upwards that is your parent okay so we know we're going to move three units upwards so one two three and we're going to move two units to the right one two so if you focus on that one point and you go three units up and two units to the right you'll land about right here or if you go two units to the right and the three units up you notice that you land in the same spot all right and then you draw your line there. This coincidentally happens to land on the same line. We'll talk more about that later. But that's basically it. Okay? Okay, so put a star next to this one. We won't do the entire problem, but this always pops up on an assessment. So, and this always throws people off. If I told you guys y equals 6 plus the quantity x plus 2 squared, okay? People flip out because of this guy right here, okay? Now, keep in mind that 6 is still a constant, and this negative 2 is still a constant, okay? So I go back to my original question for you guys. How can you tell which one's which? Which one represents H and which one represents K? Is H always the one that goes first, right? So remember, if we go all the way back to the beginning, H is always the one that's on the inside of the function, and K is always the one that's on the outside of the function. So they tend to rewrite this to bug you, but understand that your K value is really 6 because it's on the outside. And your h is really the number on the inside of your function, which is really negative 2. Okay, because remember, x minus negative 2 gives me x plus 2. So h is really your negative 2. So we'll end it here. Go ahead and describe what you have here. What's the picture look like? Okay, this is really a uh, parabola. That translates or shifts uh, six units up and two units to the left that's it okay we're not gonna sketch that part so last thing I want to go over is the FLT here okay so you guys know what a linear function looks like it has a degree of one a quadratic function has a degree of two Absolute value has the absolute value bars. The effects of H and K. So H is responsible for horizontal movement. K is responsible for vertical movement. Okay. We know how to describe it. We know how to graph it. And the last thing here is how do we explicitly define it? And I'll show you that real quick. It's super easy. So what if I gave you the description? Can you make me... An equation or a function so here's the last one example two what if I told you that this is a parabola that translates three units to the right and four units down. So now I give you the description. Can you tell me what my equation is, right? So y equals what, right? Okay, so here's how you do it. You know that it's a parabola. So what does that mean? We're going to have some type of square, okay? So we are moving horizontally and vertically. So I know I'm going to have to have some type of quantity here and some type of number in here. X is always going to go at the beginning. 
Think about what you would fill in here, okay? Three units to the right, so that's going to be x minus 3. Four units down, 4 down means negative 4. And that's it. Remember, h is a little bit different, you guys. h is kind of like the opposite, what some people say. So three units to the right. Some people think plus three. They think opposite, so negative three. Or remember, it's always x minus h quantity squared plus k. So h goes in directly. So if h is three, it's x minus three. All right? Just to make sure that we are solid on it, what if I did three units to the left, right? If it's three units to the left, h is really negative three. Or if you don't like that, three, opposite of three is negative three. So that's going to be a plus. All right? Because it's really x minus negative three which turns into an x plus 3, however you want to think about that, okay? And that's it, you guys. So now you've understood the effects of h and k, what it can do to your graph, and it really doesn't matter what function you guys use. h and k are always going to work the same way, all right?